The next one is pro, uh, Dr. Farsher Badi, our second presentation today. He is the Vice Dean of the Faculty of Computer Science and Informatics. Dr. Farsher Badi holds a PhD in Human Centered Communication and Informatics. He obtained his master's with honor in software IT. Generally, Dr. Badi's research deals with description logics, concept language, and their applications in semantic terminological knowledge modeling, as well as, as in the analysis of human and artificial cognition. Give a very warm round of, of applause to Dr. Fasho Badi. Thank you. Yours. Thank you very much, everyone. I'm very happy to be here with you one by one, actually. Uh, it's a pleasure to be a vice dean of the Faculty of Computer Science and Informatics at the Berlin School of Business and Innovation. Uh, as an information scientist, as a theoretical artificial intelligence scientist, and as a logician, I've always been very interested in fundamental aspects of learning especially with a special focus on interactions and communications among different actually cognitive and knowledge agents, including human beings and machines. That's why today I'm going to have a very fundamental analysis of learning in the modern world, especially with regard to robotic learning and understanding what is happening behind such a learning framework. So let's start a journey together. I'm going to offer three scenarios. The first scenario is an old traditional system of learning, is an old fashion of learning. You just have this picture in your mind. A group of learners are sitting and the teacher, the trainer, the instructor is in the center. What is here? What is happening here? The most important is that how these guys are getting interconnected together, how they are getting actually concerned with whatever they are going to learn and whatever they are going to be actually um, individualized based on what the trainer, what the teacher is doing for them. So if I want to analyze such a scenario, I would say that the most important fundamental concept in all traditional systems of learning is engagement. The students are engaged in a learning process. They are going to do something. There is an engagement. There is a kind of feeling that I want to do something. I want to learn something. So based on that, the main framework is an interaction among the teacher, the students, and these actually geometrical shape networks between the teacher and the students. And finally, the concept of personalization. It means that I, as a learner, needs to be understood, needs to be realized, needs to be actually uh, felt by my trainer. So have this scenario in your mind, my friends, and please recall it as a concept of pi personalization, interaction, and engagement. Let's go to the second scenario. In the second scenario, we have moved forward. Now we are more concerned with what the trainer and the student is doing. Something interesting, before getting into the concept of two, I would say that a lot of learning and teaching philosophies focus on pi, like cognitivism. When I am concerned with understanding, like positivism, when I am concerned with actually realization, with rationalism, with actually behaviorism, when I am concerned with the behavior and the manners of all these agents in the learning environment, and like objectivism, when the focus is on some specific object in the classroom and the trainer is asking the students to be involved in this learning process. So let's move forward to the second scenario. Now we are getting actually more developed. The technology is coming. 
Now the students are much more actually in the center of attention of the trainer and the teacher. So I will offer two very important concepts here. The first one is customization. It means that the needs, the requirements of my students are very important for me. I need to understand them. I need to have this compassionate feeling here because this student is coming with his or her own background knowledge with his or her own actually preconceptions of the world. And this is super important to be acknowledged by the trainer or the teacher. In addition, the other concept is contextualization. This is the modern learning environment based on the concept of PI, CC, customization and contextualization. These two concepts actually collectively shaping the modern world before getting more into technological enhancement. A lot, of, a lot of learning and teaching philosophies got shaped in this modern per, uh, actually era, like constructivism. Constructivism believes that any individual shapes a model of knowledge for him or herself, like constructionism, like cognitivism, and many, many more learning, which are all have root in cognitive theory and in individualistic aspects of contextualization and customization. Let's move forward to the third scenario. Now we are in the modern era. This is something that in BSVI, we are looking at such a system. I will analyze it for you and I will tell you why. What is the whatness and whyness and howness behind such a system? In this system, students are involved in a technological system. They are talking to each other. They are talking to other actually agents. They are connected via internet network and via other actually internet devices or whatever which is concerned with technology in this domain we have four very important focus areas. These are, in fact, four very important functions. The first one is personalized learning. Personalized learning means that any individual cognitive or knowledge agent has a kind of personalization of the concept of learning for him or herself. This is the reality. Someone is coming from some demographic background, someone from some religious background, some from some actually cultural background. All are the building blocks of the meaning that this guy has in or his or her own mind. In addition, the real-time feedback, one of the fundamental vocabularies of data science. The students who are studying data science know that we are all the time thinking about real-time feedback to the world. This means that the data is arriving, 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 arriving. And I need to be aware of such a river of data in the language of big data. We call it data lake. This is something that I need to see, or data ocean. What is this? I need to have a real-time feedback based on what I am feeling, what I am seeing. The third one is continuous learning. It means that learning is a dynamic cognitive actually activity which all the time is going to be developed. It never stops. It never stops. Anytime. Now I am learning. I am learning. This means that I am shaping some cognitive functions and I am actually modeling a, a structured actually shape of knowledge for my own understanding. And the last one, fostering collaboration, cooperation, co-activation and coordination. This is the reality behind actually modern learning environments. Now we can understand that if we want to have a look at the concept of pi in addition to the concept of CC, these two first er actually periods based on my own actually understanding, we will have such an era for modern learning systems. There are a lot of learning models like smart learning systems, like adoptive learning, like reinforcement learning, like conversational learning, like experimental learning, which all have root in this specific period of time. I also modeled a learning system called smart constructivism in 2018, which is actually 
exactly being located inside such a learning system. Now I want to make a summary. Now we have had the research from the first, second, and the third periods. You just imagine that there is a connection between a robot and a teach and a student. This is a trainer and this is a student. What is important? The interaction, the student, the robot. The student has mind, has brain, has nerve system, and the robot has knowledge base, expert system, and neural networks, artificial neural networks. The interaction among these guys are very important. We always look at the reflection of the mind and the cognitive minds of this guy in the machine's knowledge base, in addition to the adaptation of the machine's knowledge base into actually uh, the brain and the mind and the nerve system of this student. This is the reality behind modern learning environments. This is exactly, reflection is exactly what ChatGPT is doing for us today. Because this is modeling the nerve system, but in an artificial format. This is about how we can model a system which can be analyzed, which can be interpreted as a kind of reflection of reality into virtuality, and how the virtuality would come back to the reality in order to self-organize itself. So the collection of reflection and adaptation is something which can be called determination. In BSVI, we have a very special focus on determination. It means that we believe that our students need to be understood by our learning environment, by our modern learning environment, and we believe that the learning environment should be regularly being adopted to the students. This is the absolute meaning of determination. Why we need a determination? Because we need to satisfy all the cognitive, all the functions behind the learning process, as I mentioned earlier. So, this is, in my opinion, the reality behind virtuality and the reality behind the reality of the modern learning systems in the modern world. So, let's acknowledge the reality. Let's be informed of reality. Let's understand the reality because virtuality is nothing but the mirror of reality. A lot of people don't believe in artificial intelligence, but I also don't believe in artificial intelligence. I believe that artificial intelligence is just the picture of reality, just the picture of reality of human beings in our learning environment. In BSVI, we have a very special focus on this fact, and all the time we are going to acknowledge this fact. Now, after all these concepts, I'm going to refocus on the first question that I mentioned. Do you think that the robotic tutor is the future of lecturing? What do you think? The robotic, actually, tutor is a kind of symbol of tutors in the modern world, in smart learning environments. I'm asking my colleague, maybe he, she has an idea and can help me with idea. What do you think, my friend? You are asking me whether the robotic tutor is the future of lecturing. Let me share my idea with you. It's not just the future. It's a quantum leap in education. Imagine a classroom where learning is personalized, barriers to access crumble, and engagement soars. With robotic tutors, we're not talking about mere lectures, but... We're talking about conversations that inspire, tailored guidance that empowers, and an evolving mentor that grows with every individual student. In this vision of education, the robotic tutor is not just a tutor. It is a catalyst for change. 
a symbol of innovation, and a herald of an era where every student's potential can flourish. So, yes, the robotic tutor is not just the future, it is the future redefined. Thank you very much, and thank you very much. <laughs>